All right, guys, we are now back for episode two of Marvel Studios She-Hulk Attorney at Law, and episode two was amazing. Definitely way better than the first episode, because don't get me wrong, I loved episode one, but that was more, you know, classic MCU. It felt like kind of a, a mini Avengers movie type thing, because we had the Hulk as such a big player in the episode, and just focusing more on the superhero side of things. But now episode two is where we really get into kind of the meat of this show, really showing that it is, as has been described, a half hour legal comedy where we're getting into the lawyer side of things which again we got a, a glimpse at in episode one but now we're really really diving into that here and getting to see some of this uh mcu world expansion and world building that's really beautiful to see here so many easter eggs there's a lot to talk about here guys and so we are gonna waste no more time so, of course, quick spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it yet, go check out Marvel Studios She-Hulk Attorney at Law Episode 2 on Disney+. Plus. But without further ado, let's jump into this and break down the latest episode titled Superhuman Law. So, following Episode 1 and Jen's kind of debut to the world as She-Hulk, news is now broken of the, this courtroom catastrophe. And so now she is publicly known as She-Hulk and... Jen, even though she really doesn't want to, she ends up having to give in to this publicity. She-Hulk is the name that is given to her, and she's really not a fan of that name because, like, oh, why does it have to be a derivative of Hulk, and why does it have to be She-Hulk, and Girl Hulk, Woman Hulk, all this stuff, like, what, why? It's a stupid name. And to be fair, it it is kind of a weird name, but then again, it was like the 60s, 70s, whenever it was when this character was created. But so far, things are actually going pretty well for her. You know, everybody loves her. Everybody thinks she's really, really cool. And like, oh, she's a superhero and all this stuff. But then then she has to face the consequences of this. Because, yes, she did save those people's lives. That was great and everything. They did technically win the case. But they think that it's because of an unfair advantage of her swaying the jury and all this stuff. So she ends up getting fired. Which is, of course, really, really unfortunate. Especially because... You know, as She-Hulk, nobody is going to hire her. Nobody wants this type of person on their legal team. So it gets real awkward when she has to go to a family dinner. It's nice getting to meet her parents and the rest of her family as well. And, uh, yeah, everybody's just talking about how she's unemployed and, oh, but she's a superhero and all this different stuff. It was just made for some really awkward conversations, but I did really enjoy the joke of her father saying, oh, oh that, that Hawkeye, did, does he go around collecting these arrows or, like, what, what happens to those arrows? I thought that was a really funny joke, um, so I enjoyed that. But probably the most Easter egg filled spot of the episode is when Jen is talking to Nikki and she's on her couch in her apartment and she is looking for a new job. Again, nobody wants to hire her, but she's looking on this website and you just see a bunch of article headlines and there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here. Like, for example, find Ant-Man. We have Norse mythology, probably relating to Thor. Avengers is kind of a headline section there. Uh... But the two biggest ones to me, first of which being, why is there a giant statue of a man sticking out of the ocean? Which, of course, is a reference to Marvel Studies Eternals, which is kind of crazy that we haven't had any references to this at all. That literally there's a giant celestial head and hand sticking out of the ocean. I, I don't know what ocean, but it's one of the oceans on the Earth. And, like, nobody has mentioned it. It's been almost a year ago since that project. And, like, nobody's going to mention there's a, the fact that there's a giant man sticking out of the ocean. So I like the fact that we at least get a nice little reference to that there. But then even bigger than that, we do have a little headline there that does say, Man fights with metal claws in bar brawl. Of course, a reference to... Wolverine. We know the X-Men are coming. We know Wolverine is coming. Probably not anytime soon until at least 2025, 2026. But still really cool to see that especially since we just got the first establishment of mutants in the MCU with uh, Kamala Khan, that now we know that they're, you know, they're out there. Wolverine is out there. He does exist. We did I believe get some sort of uh, reference to him or at least a location that he's known for going to uh, in the comics uh, back in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, of course, with Madripoor and all that stuff, um, a certain bar and everything. So that was really cool. Um, but it's nice to see that, you know, Wolverine, he's coming. 
But even after all of this, despite all odds, Jen, fe she finally does end up finding a job because Mr. Halloway actually meets her at a bar and offers her a job at glk &H. He wants her to be the head of this new superhuman law division as the She-Hulk. So that's really the only reason they're hiring her is not because she's a good lawyer or anything, but just because, oh, she's a superhero, she's She-Hulk, even though she's not even a superhero yet. Um, but she, she doesn't really know how to feel about that, but she has Nikki as her paralegal. She's making tons of money, plus she's got the nice corner office. So, I mean, I mean it's a pretty sweet deal. Until another problem arises when she finds that her first case is going to be for Emil Blonsky, aka the Abomination. Of course, she has a conflict of interest here because the Abomination tried to kill her cousin Bruce Banner back in the 2008 The Incredible Hulk movie. So there's uh, some tension there, but Mr. Halloway really doesn't care at all because he's literally like, you know, if you don't take this case, then you won't have a job. So she goes to visit him at what I believe is a version of the Cube, this big superhuman prison from the comics. And you can actually see by the sign here that this is owned by the Department of Damage Control, who we first saw in the MCU in Spider-Man Homecoming, and then again in No Way Home, and really came into the forefront for the Ms. Marvel Disney Plus series, and now has the Cube Prison, where we now meet a now reformed version of Emil Blonsky, aka the Abomination, who doesn't even abomination out anymore um he literally greets jen by saying namaste so that was pretty cool but probably the most interesting piece of this conversation to me personally is when he says that he is on loan to the u.s government with seven soulmates through the prison program now the first place my mind went with this is thunderbolts because the Thunderbolts, we know they're coming. We know we're getting an MCU Thunderbolts movie at the end of Phase 5. So they're on their way. And Abomination has been a character that for the longest time since Thunderbolts was announced and even before, that he would be a member of this team, especially with his big return in She-Hulk and Shang-Chi. And just literally this description of on loan to the U.S. government with seven soulmates through the prison program, that sounds like the Suicide Squad, and Thunderbolts is basically Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad. So, this could be possibly our confirmation that the Thunderbolts, not only is Abomination going to be a member, but that they already exist, which is, I think, even more interesting to me, in that there's seven soulmates, so that would mean an eight-person team, including Abomination, so that would probably be Baron Zemo, U.S. Agent, uh, Yelena Belova, Taskmaster, Ghost, who knows who the other characters could be, maybe get a bullseye in there after his appearance, possibly, at least it's rumored, in the Echo Disney Plus series, maybe get Justin Hammer in there, he's like an Iron Patriot, Detroit Steel type character, uh, bring in Songbird, introduce that new MCU character. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities with this, but what's really interesting, though, is that maybe they aren't actually even talking about the Thunderbolts, because... I just watched uh, Grace Randolph's review uh, for this, and she's seen the first four episodes, and she doesn't at all think this is involved with the Thunderbolts, and says, mentions that she knows more about that that mention of the Seven Soulmates is a setup for something later in She-Hulk, but it's not about the Thunderbolts. So is this maybe instead about the Intelligentsia? Because this is a team that uh, was rumored to be appearing in the show. I did do a video on it a couple months ago. Um, and for those of you that don't know, the Intelligentsia in the comics is basically a team of some of Marvel's most uh, brilliant, smartest villains so you have characters like modok the leader uh egghead uh ba red baron the wizard so there's a whole bunch of different characters on the team in the comics and again i did do a video on this that you can go check it out for yourself um, about this team being involved in the series and at least when it comes to the leader that would make a lot of sense to have his involvement here and Emil's specific mention here is that he says something about that he wants to go live on this big property that his seven soulmates bought for him or something like that. So these super rich, smart villains would be able to do that. So definitely some uh, food for thought that you might want to be thinking about there going in these next couple episodes of She-Hulk. But after this, we get this really nice kind of tender moment here where Blonsky, he defends himself. You know, he really um, gets to show another side of 
abomination instead of just being oh the big rage monster that he was under the influence of the super soldier serum that he didn't even take by choice he was just being a soldier he thought he was the good guy so i did really like this uh kind of other perspective of his actions and then at the end of the episode, Jen, she calls her cousin Bruce to basically let him know that, like, hey, I'm going to be defending Emil Blonsky to kind of ask him if he's okay with that, but more so just say, like, hey, I'm going to do it. And then we find out that he actually is in space on a Sakaar ship, we're assuming on his way to Sakaar, because we're all theorizing over these past couple of weeks that they are setting up World War Hulk in the MCU, or at least a kind of secondary planet hulk storyline and now here we go even further seeing that you know he mentioned in the first episode that like oh i'm gonna have to go take care of that when the sakar ship showed up and everything this seems to be even the same ship as well that now he's gonna be going back to sakar he'll probably find out just like he did in the comics that he does have a son he did some stuff in his time on sakar uh before Th thor showed up and now he has a child, which would be really, really awesome. And literally, I was so shocked and so surprised by this moment that my jaw literally dropped when it panned away and showed that he was in space. I thought it was such a cool moment. So I'm really, really excited to see where this goes. But then the episode ends with a big cliffhanger for Abomination when Jen, she's watching the news and footage is now leaked on the news that Abomination was uh, fighting in the Underground Fight Club from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So going to be interesting to see how that kind of comes into this with that storyline we know wong is going to be showing up just like he because he had those interactions with abomination in that film so i'm really really excited for this but yeah guys this was just a great episode a really great episode we do of course have that little post credit scene at the end it's just she all helping out her family and fixing things and stuff so it was a funny little bit not as good as obviously the first episode uh but i really really did I uh, love this episode so much more than the first one. Again, I still like episode one, but episode two is just a whole other thing. So I'm really excited to see that this is the kind of thing that we're going to be getting more of when it comes to the rest of the series. And the fact that this is a nine episode season, so we still have seven episodes to go. So it's not like we, we got a six episode series and like next week we'll be halfway through the season. Nah, we got nine episodes. So we get a good chunk of She-Hulk goodness coming our way these next couple months. I'm really excited for it. But guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about Marvel Studios She-Hulk Attorney at Law episode two on Disney Plus? Let me know all your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments below. But for now, guys, Thanks so much for watching. Please drop a give enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep it to date on everything goes on in the Marvel life.